I don't know. I feel like I feel like I would I would listen to him read me a nighttime story, just like the very hungry caterpillar. Today I will be doing a live book review of the hungry, the very hungry caterpillar by Eric Carle. I'm pretty sure his name was Eric Carter, but you know, Berenstein aside, is I'm going to talk about this book that was copyrighted in 1969. I read it as a little girl and it was far too complex so I decided to go back to it as a grown adult who could actually understand the dark theme of this book so on the first page we have lovely artwork that's something I will say nice about the book is that its artwork is outstanding but I think they do that for a reason but I'll get into that in a minute it says over here for my sister Christina the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And if you try to get the hardcover of this book, it's $170 now. So, guys should go check your attic, see if you have it. $170 laying around. So on the first page, we have a moon with the little egg on it. And it says, in the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. So, I feel as though that this book... As you can see the caterpillar is born and we go throughout the book more and more and the caterpillar is going through all this food that's what the holes are it's the caterpillar going through each fruit and eating more and more he's just gorging himself he doesn't really seem to care about what that does to his mental health or what that does for him and look at all these different foods we're eating. Okay, so look at look at all these foods. Spectra, just pause the videos. We'll, we'll play them right after. So look at all these foods that the hungry caterpillar is eating. At first it was fruits. At first it was, you know, something most people will consider healthy until they realize sugar is bad for them. But then you go on this page and it's a cake, ice cream, a fried pickle, um, cheese some salami do you know how greasy that is a lollipop apple pie god knows how much sugar is in that another salami um a corn muffin and then a watermelon so what do we notice about these foods here well we notice that these foods are not very healthy overall the consensus of it is kind of junk food and there's no uh diet here it almost seems it almost seems like the caterpillar is so hungry that they're just eating whatever comes their way whatever they feel like eating rather than having structure and eating things that are to a plan you know you wake up you have breakfast you have um you have salmon sushi and then for lunch you have a granola bar and then for dinner you have more salmon sushi that's something that's a little more healthy and cohesive and I think closer to the natural human diet. In this case, we have a caterpillar, but we know that's a metaphor, right? Because that's how books work. And yet here, you can kind of see that his diet is very incohesive. You can see that he's not really watching what he eats and it's all very unhealthy. And despite starting out as a small caterpillar, you know, once in a while he has a salad because that clearly counteracts eating ice cream and salami and lollipops and muffins and cake. Starts out small because he thinks, oh, you know, I'll just eat a salad to counteract that. And then boom, he's a fat little, little toadster. He looks like a little porker. That's what he looks like. Okay, and this little porker here doesn't even know how he got here. He doesn't even know. He has no idea. Look at him. His facial expression is clueless. He has no idea how good yet how bad he has it. He doesn't even know how bad things really are. Okay, and nothing is worse than a lack of self-awareness or a lack of awareness in general. And yet at the end of the book, he overcomes that. And becomes a beautiful butterfly but it doesn't show the steps from how he got from being 
a little porker to being this beautiful peacockless butterfly, pe peacockalicious butterfly. So my complaint about this book is that they should have shown the journey to to basically getting back to where you're supposed to be. And I feel like this book is rewarding people who have eating disorders because people with eating disorders are going to read this book and they're going to be like, oh, I'll just eat whatever I want and I'll just be peacockalicious at the end. That's not how life works. And I really think that the author could have did a better job. I understand the times were different and, you know, this was published or copyrighted in 1969, according to the back of it. But, you know, I highly doubt that people were fatter then than they are now. So why would the author, Mr. Eric Carl, think that this is a good idea to promote to people? Because, you know, I don't want to give this to my kid one day and they grow up and read this because this book is just the theme is too dark and heavy for children they're just not going to understand something that's this advanced i don't want to give this as a hand-me-down to my kids for when this inevitably goes to 500 dollars like the hardcover is 170 right now on amazon and they read this and they're like huh you know what i'm just gonna eat like dog crap I'm just going to do whatever I want, have no consequences, and develop a freaking eating disorder that will affect me for the rest of my life. And next thing you know, you're, you're a hungry, hungry Catherine, and you're on my 600-pound life. All because you read The Very Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. So that's something to consider before I go and I recommend this book to you guys. Like, oh, go read it. Like, read it at your own risk. This is a dangerous book. It is going to radicalize the fat people. And personally, I think that we should take the Dr. Seuss approach and ban this book, despite its beautiful art. Listen, it has beautiful art. I agree. I'm with you guys 100%. But that's part of their tactic. That's part of their game to radicalize you to the fat side and convince you to join their their thing. Because how much you want to bet Eric Carle is is overweight? right this is clearly to push that agenda i think so personally i think this book is more dangerous than mein Kampf because of the destruction it could do to society so i hope you guys enjoyed this book review and i hope you guys will take my words with great consideration before you promote this book before you give it to somebody else and you know kind of unbrainwash yourself decondition yourself about oh you know it's just a pretty book with pretty pictures and actually learn the high amounts of vocabulary that are in here so that you can actually understand what's going on in the book use some critical thinking this one here for example a complex word that's in here the sunday morning the Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny, very hungry caterpillar, right? Seems simple. You see, you're like, oh, the book can't be that hard. And then suddenly you go throughout the book and here they are mentioning Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Oh, now we're getting fancy. Now we're using academic vocabulary to confuse the masses that read this because they'll be too confused not knowing what's going on when they're reading the book. And then they're going to get indoctrinated into being fat. You know, so just be aware of the language like this one. What's this word? I don't even know what this word is. And I'm highly educated. What does that say? Stamache? Stamache? I don't know. Maybe it means um, eat more in French for all I know. But anyway, you guys get the point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this book review. And I hope that this book review has changed your mind and your life potentially. And I can save one more person from being fat. Thank you.